Hi there, this is Sid Vasanani from Style My Pick, and in this slightly advanced tutorial, I'm going to show you the benefits of having a concise workflow and how the right choice of tools and techniques in a systematic order will not only give you an amazing skin but save you hours of retouch time. The beauty skin retouching workflow is quite similar to the previous fashion series we've done but with a few alterations as we have to deal with a lot more skin texture. So let's begin with the workflow. Step 1 is healing. By default, the panel selects the spot healing tool which with its new content aware feature is great for fashion and mid-length shots. But for sharp skin texture like in this image, I prefer the healing brush tool. It works best with a small brush size of around 5 to 10 pixels and 75% hardness. I'm going to begin with the large blemishes. Holding Alt or Option key, you can define a reference point and then paint with that reference. I'm going to look for similarly textured area to sample from very close to the area I want to heal. And it is a good practice to paint in quick small strokes and never to drag your brush stroke. I sometimes change the blend mode to lighten for a subtle heal of dark spots. The most important thing is to keep an eye for any repeated patterns or a slight blur in the texture. These two should be strictly avoided. Larger blemishes such as these should be removed with different reference points. The only thing I use it is for the most obvious large blemishes, which you can see even when you're zoomed out. I usually zoom the image to around 200% when I'm working. I also get rid of 100% black or white spots which would be difficult to dodge and burn later. For removing this hair strand, I would prefer using the replace blend mode. This makes the healing brush act as a very hard clone stamp. When you work in small areas like this, the tool takes care of the luminosity and the color values very well. Using a small brush size lets you get into tight areas without pulling unwanted information from the surroundings. You can also do your healing on an empty layer, but I prefer this method as it gives you the option to use the patch tool which the empty layer technique doesn't. And if you want to revert back or mask out areas, you can always use the history brush tool. The replace mode in the healing brush is great to clean out crosshair as well. It works best with a very small brush size of around 3 to 5 pixels. For crosshair such as this, you can also use the clone stamp tool at 100% opacity and flow and it will act exactly the same as the healing brush tool in the replace mode. Another popular technique to do this is create a split frequency and heal the texture on the high frequency layer. Healing in this technique usually avoids color contamination in high contrast areas. But these issues can easily be avoided by using proper healing practices like I mentioned before and thus eliminating all the unnecessary steps. Moreover, if you're working on the texture layer, some blemishes leave color unevenness in the low frequency layer which you have to fix separately. Healing on a single layer takes care of color and luminosity at the same time. To fine tune areas such as this, where two colors meet, the clone stamp tool is ideal. I use the clone stamp at around 30% flow and the brush is usually very soft. The clone stamp tool is great to define edges like lips, nose and sometimes those creative makeup on the eyes. You can switch to the blend mode darken when painting over lighter areas or lighten when painting over darker areas or spots. I never use opacity for any brush tool, especially cloning and paint as I use the fade tool a lot to fine tune the opacity if needed. I use the same principle of the healing brush that is a small brush size and paint in small brush strokes. Ok, so now we have a good healing base. Next step is skin smoothing and for this image I'm going to use the headshot option from the panel. When it's done, it creates a mask and chooses a brush for you to paint on. Before I begin, I usually shift click to disable the mask to see the effect. I'm going to fine tune the blur and texture intensities if needed and the skin looks nice except for the shine which is missing. So I use this little trick. I double click on the group layer to open layer styles and use the blend if white slider to reveal the highlights from the underlying layer. Pressing alt or option to separate the slider results in a smoother transition. When I see the skin I want, I will shift click to enable the mask and paint on it with around 50% flow. 
I'm going to even out the texture in this step and only paint in open skin areas away from the edges. Basically, we are creating a clean base for dodge and burn in this step. This technique is designed in such a way that forget about blurring the skin, but unlike standard frequency separation which retains the skin texture, this method actually enhances it. I will also use this to soften the lips texture slightly. I'm going to reduce the flow to around 10% and paint on the lips softly. Right now I'm working on a 16-bit image and I've set the corresponding panel actions accordingly. And based on the camera megapixels of the image, the panel scripts make appropriate calculations for the skin in full body, mid length, headshot and close-up settings. Now the next step is color dodge and burn. And for this, I usually zoom out a bit to see the whole face. The brush is selected for me and I need to pick a color to paint. My eyedropper tool is usually set to 5x5 average sample size to make an accurate skin tone selection. First I'll pick a mid-tone shade and blend it with the shadows and then pick a highlight shade to blend it with the mid-tones. I always paint with 10% flow and on light to dark. This step takes care of color transitions and a bit of tonal depth. You can do a lot more with color dodge and burn but in this tutorial I'm focusing on the skin. Like I said, I never use opacity for the brush, but use the fade tool instead. If you use opacity in the brush, you need to guess the proper intensity. The fade command lets me put the opacity visually to exactly where I want it. To fade an effect or brush stroke, you must perform the fade immediately after the last operation. Photoshop lets you fade only the last step in its history. By now, you know how important the fade tool is for the painting workflow and Photoshop has it hidden in its menus. You can access it with a 3 key shortcut, but if you do that after every brush stroke, it just breaks the workflow, and I would rather not use it if it weren't for the panel. Once I'm done, I'll double click the layer group, and this time pressing Alt Option, move the blend if black slider to fine tune the shadow transitions. Since I've painted only lighter shades over darker ones, this fixes any color bleeding issues in the dark areas. Next step is to balance skin color, and for that I'll click on the skin saturation mask. Again, I'll disable the layer mask to see the effect and I'll double click the adjustment layer to get the skin tone I want. You can do this by slightly moving the hue slider to suit the existing skin tone. I'm also going to adjust the layer opacity to fine tune. Now I'm going to enable the mask pack and with around 30% flow, paint over the yellowish areas and the oversaturated areas of the skin. Always try to avoid the makeup areas like cheekbones and eyelids. So finally we have an excellent base for dodge and burn. I'm clicking on dodge and then burn on the panel. I'm also going to create a help layer by creating a black and white adjustment layer and reducing the reds and slightly the yellow just enough to see the issues we left out in the healing process. And check this out, if we had started dodge and burn right after healing, we had to deal with all these issues. Okay, so I'm going to start with dodge. I do dodging in three steps. First is global correction. For this, I zoom out completely and set the flow to 1% and try to lighten any dark blotches in the tonal transition. The panel selects the brush and I have to paint on the mask. Try to keep your brush size slightly smaller than the area you're working on. I'm not sure if you can see what I'm doing, the change is very subtle and gradual. I will always zoom out to check and work on only the most obvious distractions. This is a very time consuming but an important technique and the first part of this workflow is designed to minimize the time allotted for this particular step which could alone take up to 2 hours. I plan to do the entire skin in 20 minutes. Always use the fade tool to fine tune. Next is the pixel level correction. For this, I keep the brush flow to 10% and zoom in to see any dark pixel that stands out of place and with a matching brush size, I will dodge to blend it. This technique is also useful to lighten any wrinkles or lines naturally. I'm also going to lighten the lip texture with this. Remember, do not do this if your final output is only for the web. You won't notice any of this work in small size outputs. Some spots I can clean them by going back to the healing layer and removing them with the healing brush. 
and then come back to the dodge mask and continue. Ok the last step in dodging is sculpting or contouring the face and for that I zoom out once again and with the same 10% flow I gently paint in the highlights softly. I usually enhance the existing highlights. Most of the work is on the dodge layer usually. I change the brush size to match the area I need to lighten. I also use it to brighten the eyes and lips and teeth. Now I'll move on to the burn layer. The first thing I'm going to do is darken the eyebrows. I'm also going to paint with a hair size brush over the hair to make it stand out. This is what makes the eyebrows pop out in the magazines. Ok almost there, now I'm going to add some extra shine on the highlights. Let me delete this help layer first. I'm going to select color range and click on the brightest highlight on the image. You can see in the preview the amount of highlights you want to be selected. I'm fine with this so I'll click ok. Now I'm going to create a solid fill adjustment layer with white color. As you can see it's a bit too much so I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light and adjust the opacity to complement the image. I can also mask out the areas that I don't want. With proper makeup you can also create a wet or glossy look with this technique. The final touch is film grain. I'm going to click on the panel to create it. The problem with digital is that there is some noise in the shadows but very little in the midtones or the highlights. And when we add more grain, the shadows look too grainy. To solve this, I'll double click on the layer to go to the blended slider once again and move the entire black slider to balance the film grain in the shadows and highlights. The grain also helps cover up any retouching traces that might have been left behind, especially during healing or dodge and burn. So let's take a look at the before and the after. You can always go back into any of these layers to do more healing, skin smoothing or color dodge and burn. This entire workflow is non-destructive and most of the retouching you have seen so far is in real time. If you are in the business of retouching, quality is a must have these days. It is time that sets us apart as a pro or an amateur. So I hope you learned something new from this and you can download this PSD file for a closer study from the link below. You can also recreate these exact steps on every image with the pro workflow panel. If you have any questions please leave them in the comments and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos. Thank you for watching.